Well, support for federal Labor has plunged in Western Australia with the coalition now ahead in the West and drawing level in New South Wales. That's according to the latest state-by-state -state breakdown in news poll this morning. Joining us live now is the Liberal Senator Holly Hughes and the Assistant Defence Minister Matt Thistlethwaite. Um, good morning to you both. Hope you all had a very good long weekend that's obviously continuing today. But uh, Matt, we'll start off with you morning, because Pete, the high Matt watermark Houston. of the West is always going to be tough to maintain. But any surprise at that data drop today? Well, Pete, but every election cycle is about 80 or 90 news polls. Uh, some are going to go up, some are going to go down. Um, that's a fact of life. But what's important from our perspective is that the parties have a policy plan. Um, and that's what Labor has. We've got a plan to ensure that more Australians keep more of what they earn with our tax cuts that are coming up. Um, our cost of living measures to assist Australians during this difficult period, cheaper childcare, the energy reboots, fee-free TAFE, all these policies that we have in place to assist Australians yeah, to get through this Yeah, but doesn't this poll this show period. that that's not working? Well, I, I would dispute that. Um, I think that uh, our policy plan is working and that many Australians know that we're doing our utmost best to prioritise cost of living. I was doing some door knocking last weekend in Mascot in my electorate. Um, I can tell you that every one of the electors that I spoke to was looking forward to receiving a tax cut on the 1st of July this year. And they know that Labor's working to ensure that they earn more and that they keep more of what they earn. Uh, and that's the importance from their perspective at the moment. They want to know what the policies are that assist them to get through this difficult period. Holly, it's um, even Stevens in New South Wales, as we said earlier, but it's still not mm. going to be enough to get you there when the election rolls around next year, right? Look, the election is 12 months away. Matt's right when he says news polls come and go every few weeks, so they move around quite a lot. But I think what you are starting to see reflected is cost of living pressures are real. They know that this was a government more focused on spending $450, $450 million on a referendum before they even seemed to notice there was a cost of living crisis occurring. Uh, they've been continually lied to. Whether it was changes to the Stage 3 tax cuts, whether it was the $275 that's coming off their energy bills, which we know they're never, ever going to see. Uh, we learned today that it looks like Chris Bowen and Anthony Albanese took two separate private planes up to Newcastle last week to make renewable energy announcements. The electorate can see sort of th right through this sorts of hypocrisy. And I think as we get closer to the election, they're going to continue to see through this hypocrisy from this government that's very much do as I say, not as I do, uh, does not tell the truth. Mr Albanese promised that this would be a government that was transparent. We know the opacity that they show is just breathtaking with every policy. They've mm. been caught out making stakeholders sign NDAs on everything from faith groups to the NDIS consultations. This sort of, tra this sort of duplicitous nature that they're displaying towards the electorate uh, is really starting to show through and, and electors are starting to notice it. They are so under the pump with cost of living pressures, though. It's really going to take a little while for their interest, I think. To yeah, with, totally with all of that politics. said, though, Holly, I mean, why, why shouldn't you be further ahead then, according to the polls? Well, as I just said, I think that Australians are so under the pump that they're not honed in on politics full time. They don't live in our little bubble. They don't get up and read three or four newspapers every morning. Uh, you know, they don't spend the Monday morning of a four day long weekend in here with you. I mean, I can think of nowhere else that I would want to be. <laughs> but there'll be a lot of people still having a sleep in on a public holiday because, you know, this isn't the bubble they live in. I think the greatest fear that this country faces, and I really I hope whether you're a Liberal voter or a Labor voter, the thought of a hung parliament, the thought of having to deal with some of those crossbenchers still remaining there uh, and being able to drive decisions in this country is actually a much scarier outcome for everybody. Mm. So uh, I hope to see Peter Dutton and the Prime Minister afterwards and I'm sure, uh, you know, Matt would like to see Anthony Albanese, but I think for the sake of Australians, the risk of a minority government is a very scary one. Hey, um, Holly, like politicians, we don't get days off. We don't get public holidays. So, um, good to have you with us, by the oh, way. I know. <laughs> I've had, I had yesterday at Sky, too. Where else would I want to be? There we go. We just love it.